Hi folks, today's video is going to be about a couple of badly needed repairs and a modification. I've got a cracked fuel tank on my trimmer that I need to fix. I managed to bounce my little DeWalt chainsaw off a rock while cutting some limbs that were laying on the ground. And I've got a part coming in from Woodland Mills to fix the trailer hitch issues on the chipper. So let's get to it. Well, that doesn't work very well. What's up, everyone, and welcome back to Retired for Life. So today we are going to start out with a repair on that trimmer and I've got a part in from Amazon. Oh yeah, look at that. We got a nice new gas tank. Comes complete with fuel lines. So it should be a fairly straightforward repair. So let's get the old one off and make sure this one's going to fit. All right, let's see if we can figure out what to do with this. Now, I see a, a Torx screw right there. I think maybe I'll take the air filter cover off just to get it out of the way. That's going to make it easier to get to that screw. And I have got one, two, three screws in the pull cord cover. And it looks like I need to take this off in order to get to the fuel tank. So now we will very carefully remove the pull starter. Okay, so there's all our bits and pieces that are holding this tank in. So it looks like it just kind of sits on a rubber mount on the inside of the pull cord housing. And here's a piece that is attached to the fuel tank. That's that screw that I saw coming through from the other side. And then we've got the fuel lines to take off. And there's the fuel lines over here. These green lines. Yeah. Nice and simple to get to. <laughs> All right, we'll see what we can do with it. All right, let's see if we can wiggle this free here. Let's see if we can pluck that out of there. Okay, there's one. And this other one is really in there. All right, I can see this now. The kind of accordion shaped one is on a line at the bottom of the carburetor. And there we go. So there's nothing that really holds these lines on. They just slip onto the tubes. All right, so I need to take this piece off of this tank and put it on the new tank. That seems to be the only thing missing. All right, so I can't really get the, to the gas line to get it on. So I'm gonna take the uh, breather housing off. Now, unfortunately, that looks like it also are the bolts that hold the carburetor in place. Okay. Now, I think what I'm gonna do 
is thread one of these back on here just to temporarily hold the carburetor down so it can't take off on me. That's got it. Okay. That makes it much easier to get to everything. So my top line here was the non-accordion one. And then the bottom line is the accordion line. Okay, there's our two lines on. That made it so much easier. And then I'm going to put this cover right back on. I don't want to leave this off. That made a huge difference. I just couldn't get to those lines otherwise. cord works. Let's put some gas in there and make sure nothing leaks and we'll give it a start. All right, we've got gas in there. No sign of any leaks. I hit the primer ball once or twice here. Let's see what happens. Pair down. That's a crucial piece of equipment for me around here because I also put a really heavy bush blade on it too when I'm working on the trails. Next is the chainsaw. Well, I hope you guys have been enjoying today's video and if you are enjoying it, I'd really appreciate the like. And I'd love to have you subscribe to the channel. And if you've got any suggestions, thoughts, anything like that, I'd love to hear from you. All right, let's get back to work. All right, folks, let's get the uh, chain off of the little DeWalt uh, chainsaw, get it cleaned up inside here, and we'll get the chain soaking for a few minutes, and then we'll get it sharpened. All right, so we've got the battery out, so it can't do anything. Let's see how dirty we are inside here. I expect it's going to be very dirty. Uh, not too bad. All right, we'll get that all cleaned up. Get the blade checked. don't feel any burrs along the edges or anything so that seems good well, I do like to get the chains fairly clean before I put them on the grinder because the last thing you want to do is get oil in your grinding wheel that really will hurt the efficiency of it and while we're letting that soak a little bit I'll get this cleaned up and ready for reassemble all right, folks, we got our little chainsaw chain out of the degreaser. Looks nice and clean. Let's get things over to the sharpener. All right, guys, so we've got my Oregon 410-120 uh, model grinder here. We're all set up on our angles. So I'm just getting things positioned to uh, our depth and chain position.
All right, folks, we've got our parts pretty much cleaned up. And we'll give the end here. Doesn't take more than one pump on each side and you can see the grease coming through it. The grease, I, I doubt really makes any kind of difference, but I do it anyway because you've constantly got oil pouring out onto your chain and your chain is running over top of that. So I'm not sure how grease is supposed to help, but we do it anyway. So I've cleaned these out. Now you don't have to go crazy on cleaning them out. Um, the one thing you want to make sure is that your mating surfaces are clean and just take out the bulk of the sawdust because that helps to make sure that channel is clear and it does a better job of ejecting the sawdust that's building up from you cutting. You can see that chain is hanging, which is not, not right. So we'll tighten it up enough. So the chain just moved up now, made contact with the bottom of the bar. Tighten that up. Make sure it moves nice and freely which it does. There's another job done. So here's our part. It is quite the hefty hunk of steel. All right, here it is here. So you can see it gets mounted to the bottom of this crossbar, the tow bar. So I've got to drill two holes in it for these bolts. So they supply the bolts and they, and they even supply the drill to drill the hole. That's pretty good. So what I think I'm going to do is go out and uh, take the one side of it apart and bring it in. So I went out and had a look out there and it's definitely not worth trying to do this by hand. So I'm going to clamp this into place on the bar, center it up, clamp it in, and then take it to my drill press and get that first hole drilled through. That's gonna be quite a bit easier. All right, let's get that done. We'll get these two holes in place and then get this thing back out there. Now the instructions show the bolts coming down through the top, head down through, but that's going to put the bottom of the bolt sticking down closer to the ground. And I want to minimize what's down pointing at the ground. So I'm going to put them the other way around. I don't see any disadvantage in doing that. So that's how I'm going to install it. So the two inch ball that comes with it has got this great big long shank on it. So I don't want to cut it off because you never know when something like that would come in handy. But I do have a two inch ball that has a short shank on it. So that should work very nicely. Put a little bit of Never Seize on there so I can get it off when I want to, if I ever want to. All right, that's that. Modification complete. Let's go take it out there and install it and see if this works. All right, let's get this in place here. Well, that certainly looks good.
Well, there we are. Looks good. I think having these nuts up here is definitely the way to go. And it doesn't look like they're going to get in the way of anything. So now the acid test. Let's see if we can hook the trailer up and hook up the uh, arm for the hydraulic switch. Well, that's certainly easy. Now we'll bring the chute over. All right, there's the chute in place. And yeah, look at that. No problem, I could even drive around with the chute down uh, if I wanted to. Okay. We're good. All right, folks, that's it. We've got our repairs done. We've got the uh, trailer hitch modification installed and everything looks good there. So we are actually finally ready uh, to get set to test this thing. So this is the Woodland Mills WC46 wood chipper. She's on the tractor and ready to go. But I think we're gonna leave you folks there with this video and we'll get a test planned and we'll try to get that done for the next video. So if, if anybody's got any experience with one of these, I'd love to hear from you. Let me know what you think of it. Uh, any do's and don'ts, because as I say, this is the first time I have run a wood chipper like this, a PTO driven wood chipper, so it'll be interesting. The only thing that we have left to do is put the oil in and set up the jack shaft for the PTO. So any comments, questions, anything like that, please let me know. And thanks very much for watching. I hope you've been finding the videos interesting, or at the very least, a little bit entertaining. And if you have, please give them a like and share around. And I'd love to have you subscribe to the channel. That would really help. So remember to be safe out there, be good to each other, and we will see you out on the trails the next time.